everybody, welcome to Rouse's. I'm Chef Nino, and we have Miss Katie, and we have a special show for you today. We are celebrating the Italian Cuisine Week, and it's promoted by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Rome. All right, and we have Katie uh, from Gourmet Foods International. They are the Gourmet Foods International that brings the fine Italian products to all of the 64 Rouse's, and we're excited to have you. And she's going to be doing a charcuterie board. Now, all the Italian embassies and consulates around the world. They organize events and special events and classes in the prospective host country. But here in the U.S., uh, the Italian Cuisine Weeks could be held during the week of November 16th through the 22nd. And many different activities all over the U.S. would take place all over the country. And we here at Rouse are going to be doing the uh, classes here and the, the chartreuse and all kind of arboreal rice uh, recipes. And the initiative aims at promoting the Mediterranean diet, and that's what we're all about, the Mediterranean diet as a healthy lifestyle, also, uh, and eating habits that are widely accessible and affordable. Now, when we say widely accessible, because of the distributors like yourself, they're uh, accessible. We now have, whereas 10 years ago, we didn't have all these products, but now we can get them. They're accessible and they're affordable. The Italian Cuisine Week also promotes the quality and traditions, and we're going to talk about that, supporting Italian food products, as well as the territories where the Italian food products are made. And we're going to talk about the territories and the regions, et cetera. Without further ado, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. Uh, we have Miss Katie, and I want you to take the show, and I really appreciate your expertise for being here. Show us how to do a charcuterie board with these fine Italian products, fine at the Rouse's. Thank you. It would be my pleasure, Chef. Uh, so charcuterie boards are, are you know a big thing these days uh, also with the holidays coming up you're gonna want to treat your guests to something truly exceptional and with all these authentic Italian products it's easy 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 to showcase the traditional the authentic the delicious so to start off we're gonna start with the king of cheese the Parmigiano Reggiano uh, it is the most imitated cheese in the world because it is so phenomenal so we're gonna present it three ways on the cheese board I actually did some of this beforehand so that we didn't waste a lot of time doing it. Uh, so we have crumbles, which showcases the lovely, lovely granular structure that's a, re that's a result of the aging process. There we go. Let's just pile them up there on the board. I also did some crumbles and put them in a little ramekin with a little bit of the Rouse's balsamic glaze, also made in Italy. From it, Modena. From Modena, Age. yes, which yeah. is actually one of the regions where you can make Parmigiano Reggiano too, as well as, well as Parma oh, wow. and Reggio Emilia and a few other nearby areas that you're allowed to that are allowed to make Parmigiano Reggiano. All right, so we're gonna put all these crumbles on here, just pile them on up, make them look all rustic and pretty. You know what I like about Parmigiano Reggiano? It's a personal note, real personal. I'm lactose intolerant, and this is one of the few cheeses that I can eat because it's very low or little lactose. Absolutely, aged cheeses are by and large like that. You know, there's very little lactose left, if any at all. It just depends on the age. Um, but I am gonna leave the rind on. Why are you gonna do that? I'm gonna do that because this is a really good way to tell when you're buying cheese if you have the real deal Parmigiano Reggiano or not. Because uh, you'll see different parts of the name in the characteristic dot pattern on the rind. Only real Parmigiano Reggiano can do that. How about that? So we're gonna stick it on the board just as a nice little authentic piece. I've also prepared what I call some Parmigiano Reggiano ribbons. And I just kind of splay those out here. And just to show you real quick how that's done. Folks, I was so impressed. Watch this. You just take, well, you want to make sure that the cheese is fairly, you know, fairly cold. You don't want it to be room temperature because it'll crumble. But you just easily glide the vegetable peeler down the cheese. Look and there that. you go. You got a beautiful little ribbon. And you can get these gadgets at the Rouse's and all these wonderful Italian products at the Rouse's. Absolutely. You just want a nice variety of presentation. That's what charcuterie boards are all about is variety. Mm. All right, so next we have the beautiful Gorgonzola Mountain, also known as Gorgonzola Picante. This is another protected cheese by, um, by Italian and European law, and it is a beautiful, full-fat, pasteurized cow's milk blue cheese, well known for its fudgy texture and its earthy, spicy blue bite. It is truly a It really is a phenom. Like yes. it melts in your mouth. It you is know? just so good, so good. And I like to leave these intact on the cheese board because they're just so gorgeous the way they are. Each piece is a unique work of art because of the bluing that happens during that aging process. It is just great. Now, I believe when you got it, uh, like you'd buy it from the rouses wrapped up, I believe you, you cut off the edges and the ends. Yes. Why is that? Yes, the aging process, they wash it with okay. salt water, which causes beneficial bacteria to develop. While that's important to the aging process, it's not too pleasant. So I always cut it off okay. 
the cheese so that nobody takes a bite by accident. It's a little funky. Yeah, that wouldn't be good, huh? No, no, not amazingly delicious. Now, like the rest this of our round is here. different. You cut, you don't want to cut that off and discard it. Oh, absolutely not. No, actually, never throw away these cheese rinds. Put them in a bag, keep them in your freezer, and the next time you're making soup or stock, throw this in there. It'll add a phenomenal, phenomenal amount of flavor, much like when you add a ham bone or something to a soup. Look at you. Yeah, definitely. All right, so lastly for cheese, we have Fontina Fontal, which is a modern evolution of the more famous Fontina Valdosta, which is an alpine cheese from Italy, um, known for its, you know, funkiness. But this cheese is much different. It is pasteurized, it is aged for at least two months, but not more than four. And it is just young and supple and creamy and mild and sweet. And it melts really nice. If oh, you're on, really on chicken does. breast or whatever, we make an in bottini, we use the fontina. I yeah. gotcha, yeah. And it's a great foil to the rest of the cheeses. Now, for meats, we've picked three salumi favorites. We're starting off with the most famous, the prosciutto, which is made from the leg of the pig, which is then dry cured, sliced thinly, has a wonderful, like, sweet and salty flavor. Prosciutto is amazing. Oh, it really is. It really is. Um, we also have Salumi Milano, which is obviously named from Milan and from northern Italy. This is simple, but simple is phenomenal. It's just flavored with salt, pepper, and garlic, and that's all you need. It's just sweet. And this one right here is Salumi Calabrese, named for Calabria in, south in southern Italy, and it's got a nice spicy kick that I think people on the Gulf Coast are gonna like. Calabria, they, the hot peppers grow almost wild and they do a lot of dishes with the hot peppers. Oh, yes. And what does it look like whenever uh, they would, the customer would buy these meats? Do we have a, a sample? We do, we do, we do have some. Yeah. I want y'all to see this so y'all see, it's already cut for you, pre-packaged. Look at, that's the uh, salami, all right? Prosciutto, uh, and that's a calabrese. Check it out, this is what it looks like when you get it. Conveniently done, you can make your charcuterie. We gave you a little bit of assistance. You to cut everything up sorry no no absolutely that's super convenient yeah. um, but just in case you want to go the extra mile with your charcuterie board there's some extras you can add also authentic well, italian and also it rouses yes i have castel vitrano olives from mm. from sicily oh, yeah. which are really really buttery a little bit briny and it just really opens up and brings in some of these flavors that you wouldn't have noticed in the cheese before um, it's it's wonderful addition to a cheese plate goes well with everything on it also, we have the Bono Sicilian Orange Spread, which is certified organic, made in Sicily. And this is a fruit punch, I tell you what. It's like 65% fruit. 65% yes, fruit. it is amazing. Now, hold on, hold on a minute. Now, I, I think we would need some wine or something with this. Oh, I mean, absolutely. what would we use? What kind of wine would we use? Oh, look who's in the house, Mr. Andrew. All right, and he is the wine expert for Rouse's and the, what is your title, Mr. Andrew? I am the wine and spirits category manager for Rouse's. Man, well, so what would you recommend with this from your experience? Well, for me, um, I mean, the first thing about, about pairing any wine is really about your taste and what you really love. Um, for me, I think prosciutto, and particularly the Pitar's, um, pro, sorry, Prosecco uh, goes with the prosciutto. Uh, the Prosecco is a perfect pair for charcuterie. It really is. It's bright, has a lot of um, that green fruits, the apple and pear, um, and it helps to bring out and some of the uh, salty flavors in the cheeses and the sliced meats and balance out a, a bit of that um, tart flavor that you get and brings forward the fruit and really so, pairs with everything. Yeah, I think it's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. bottle too. It what is. a nice <laughs> presentation, huh? It starts the party as soon as you come out. I wish we'd, we'd pop it now, but... Uh, you, you know what I like about these fine Italian products and the fine wines I find at Rouse's? You can't go out to eat and find better products out. You, could, you, you can make it better at your own house with these fine products that they're bringing over agreed, from Italy. Agreed. Really, it's the truth, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you can a make them so many different ways. A little bit of something fine is better than a lot of bit of something not so fine. You got the quotes. I'm serious, <laughs> huh? But uh, Mr. Andrew, thanks for coming, and we appreciate Thank your you expertise, and uh, can't wait to see all the new uh, ideas you're going to bring to the yes. Rouse's. So many new things coming into Rouse's from uh, Italy and from all over the world, but particularly Italy. Uh, there's just so many beautiful wines from all, up and down the country. So, wow. so what are we going to do to, to, to finish this off? What would you recommend? Uh, well, we picked out the Asturi Bruschettini, which are these all-natural toasts baked in Italy. Um, 
artisanal methods, age-old recipes, that old chestnut, that's what the, you know, that's what the Italians are all about. Uh, and we use the Classico Virgin Olive Oil, which that is great. I love a nice, you know, classic cracker to go with the cheese board. Oh, that way the components, toast. yeah, the components shine. And they're called bruschettini. Yes. Not the bruschetta, bruschettini. That's a diminutive of the verb, or the noun. Yeah, eeny. Yeah, only big eeny little, yeah. Oh yeah, I love that. And uh, there's also two other flavors, rosemary and olive oil and garlic and parsley available if you want something flavored. Wow, and I'm excited about this marmalade from Sicily. I lived in Sicily many years, all right? And they even have blood oranges. Yes, right? yes. Sicily is famous well. for the blood oranges, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about Sicily, it, they called it the breadbasket of the Mediterranean. Everybody wanted Sicily because it has three growing seasons, and it literally fed the known world at, at the time. All right, the great Roman, there were 20 nations from uh, Ethiopia to England, from Spain to Syria, the Romans had their big, they owned it. And they, but they'd bring the technology and the food, et cetera, architecture, right to Sicily. And because of the importance, the strategic part of it, everybody wanted to own Sicily, the Arabs, the Byzantine, everybody. But if now we have this here, and I can't believe it, I'm seeing things that I ate in Sicily right here at the Rouses. This is great. The global market's an amazing thing. Wow, isn't it? And you know, this is beautiful. Would you take a look at that? I mean. Boy, boy, boy. And all of these products can be found at your local Rouse's. So these recipes and more can be found on Rouse's.com. You're going to love it. And we truly appreciate the uh, collaboration with uh, the, uh, your distributorship and Andrew and everybody and the film crew. And this is great. It's Italian Cuisine Week, November 16th through the 22nd. Let's celebrate and let's get some of these fine Italian products at your Rouse's. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. See you all next time. Chef Nina with Rouse's.